Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for the Targeting the Muscle series. Today's muscle is glutes. Today's exercise is lunges. How do you do your lunges to make sure you're doing a good job targeting glutes, especially if you're having trouble with it? If your lunges blow up your glutes, skip this video, downvote, report the video. Just kidding, please don't do any of that. Here's the deal. First tip, here we go. All right, step length. How long should you step in order to target glutes the most? Technically speaking, the longer you step, as long as you're still stable and able to produce a ton of force, your glutes take a larger fraction of that load and thus stimulus. If we think about it intellectually, if we just go down like this and come up like that, that's a shitload of quads and not a whole lot of glutes. We're staying mostly upright. The glute doesn't have a ton of uh, sort of distance to translate through. If we go a little bit like this, this is the glute we're targeting here with this leg. Yeah, we get a little bit more glute stuff because we're sitting so much further back, which is really what hits the glutes a ton. It's fine, but you can tell there's still a lot of knee flexion going on relative to hip flexion. And we don't want that because it's targets the quads a lot, the glutes not so much. If we take a really long step, notice how much insane stretch we're putting on the glutes. And then that allows us to hit the glutes a ton. So a nice slow descent like that with a really long step allows us to maximize glute involvement, which is a really awesome thing. Now I said, as long as you're stable, this is where I get hurt. You don't get bonus points for trying to kill yourself in the gym. So you say, oh, long steps, huh? Watch this, yeah, see? And you go like one of the, whoa, you can barely produce force, barely stay upright. That's no bueno. So nice long steps, as long as you can make them while still stable and strong, that's gonna be pretty close to ideal for the glutes in most cases. When you're doing lunges, it's important to realize, crazy it may sound, that your legs are the target and you don't wanna do a lot of the lifting with your back. So staying relatively upright and especially having a rigid body posture is a good idea. So if you're going down, especially if you have dumbbells or a barbell, which most of the time you do, if you're going down into a lunge and you're coming down here and you're doing one of these, yes, you can lift more weight and do more reps if you start collapsing like that towards the end because it takes the load off of your legs and it creates that extra range of motion with your back. We don't want that. We wanna stay in a rigid segment, staying nice and upright with our chest. Everything is nice and straight because we don't wanna collapse like this. It takes away the target muscle and replaces it with the back. So staying nice and upright, nice and upright can really require your legs to work like crazy and demand everything out of them. They are after all the target. Now, can you lean forward a little bit in a controlled manner to stretch your glutes more? Yes, and there's not a damn thing wrong with that. So you don't have to necessarily go like this to stay super upright. What you can do is you can lean forward into the movement a little bit. Notice I'm leaning for my hips, which stretches my glute. I'm not leaning like this. That's the ticket rigid upper body, some lean is okay, but make sure you're not rounding. That's not glutes anymore, that's just ego, kids. And you know what we say about ego? I got nothing, there's no joke. Oh, which leg in lunges should hold most of your weight? Should it be 50-50, should it not? It turns out it's likely that most of the hypertrophic effect for your glutes, ooh, what up daddy, comes from that stretched position and generating tension out of that stretch. It probably doesn't come from the back leg in that contracted position nearly as much. So when we think about if we have to bias, either we do 50-50, weight normally distributed through both legs, that's totally cool, or what we can do is bias a little bit more of the load into that front leg, that taxes a crap load of glutes in that stretched position. It makes us really have to work with our glutes to get up. So what I don't want you to do is to put a lot of weight on the back leg. It's either 50-50 or lots of the weight is on the front leg. The front leg is what pushes out. The back leg just acts kind of as a support. Should you use a barbell on your back or dumbbells in your hands? Here's the deal. If you're struggling with balance, or if you have a new client you're training and they're struggling with balance, the barbell shit's kind of like a tightrope walk. I wouldn't put a bar on someone's back. 
if they're also not super strong and they tend to be wobbly. If something happens, they can always drop the dumbbells and they're cool. But if something bad happens with a barbell on your back, you're doing some time in injury jail. However, so if you're not super strong, if you're new to lunges or someone you're working with is, and if they're wobbly, dumbbells can act kind of as a really good stabilizing mechanism. And as you go down, it's really safe. If something happens, you can just drop them, no big deal. If you're more experienced, if your balance is not a limiting factor, and if you're so strong in the lunge that you'd have to grip like 70 pound dumbbells and then it's just a trap exercise and you're just trying to grip it and it's trying to fall, you're trying to target your glutes, but there's too much going on. At that point, barbell becomes a better idea because the barbell, you can put a shitload of weight on your back and only be focused on the actual movement itself, not having to worry about, are my hands gonna slip out of these dumbbells? So barbells, more than often, for the more advanced, very stable folks that are very strong, dumbbells for the folks that are unstable, new to the lift, you're worried about them getting hurt. If there's no wrong answers, you can use whatever you want. Just be aware of that. If you're really having trouble with the healing, hitting glutes on lunges, and it never occurred to you like, ah, fuck, it's because I'm using dumbbells and my grip is off, or oh, fuck, it's because I'm trying to use the barbell, but I'm always doing this instead of actually being able to sit in and do the lunge. Now you have some answers to help you out. All right, last tip. The loading that you use can present both challenges and solutions to your glute targeting problem in lunges. Here's how that works. With light loads, your technique can be so good that you have a good mind-muscle connection and connect with your glutes and everything works well. With heavier lunges, especially lunges for sets of 10 or something, you can be so enamored and so focused on actually lifting the weight that your technique goes into more optimal for lifting as much as possible, less optimal for hitting the glutes, and all of a sudden you, you are doing more work, you're doing more weight, but you get less of a glute connection. On the other hand, moderate weight, and often on the heavier range of moderates, that's a 15 or so, can actually, at the bottom especially, bias you forward a little bit more. You can't do this fake bullshit upright nonsense. And then it actually requires your front leg to work more, and thus that stretched glute to work more, and you get more glutes that way. So what I would recommend is two things. One, try to train for sets of 15 to 25 reps for lunges. Anything much less can be a little wobbly and thus you're not really connected to your glutes. Anything much more than that can start to be a really awesome quad workout, but because you're not so focused on keeping the good mechanics and you're not so focused on really using your glutes, you're just kind of lunging forward, uh, it ends up being more of a quad situation. Also, in many cases, not all, I have found that for higher reps, the quad pump and burn becomes so intense that begins to be the limiting factor and it's now a quad exercise. Just be aware of how your technique changes with loading. So before you take lunges and throw them away and say, it's a shitty glute exercise, I only ever feel my quads, experiment with slightly heavier loads, moderate loads, and slightly lighter loads and see which one of those actually hits your glutes the best. Sometimes if you think, oh, it's all quads and you go a little heavier, you actually find your glutes get super sore and super tight and everything is great again. Folks, that's all the tips I have for this time. See you next time for the next video.